Readings will now be given by Elizabeth from Georgia. The Bible, Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. John And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Luke And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise. Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Psalms Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. First Timothy For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, and Prose Works, by Mary Baker Eddy. 
To those leaning on the sustaining infinite, today is big with blessings. God is love, and we ask him to be more. God is intelligence. Can we inform the infinite mind of anything he does not already comprehend? Do we expect to change perfection? Shall we plead for more at the open fount, which is pouring forth more than we accept? How empty are our conceptions of deity? We admit, theoretically, that God is good, omnipotent, omnipresent, infinite. And then we try to give information to this infinite mind. We plead for unmerited pardon and for a liberal outpouring of benefactions. Are we really grateful for the good already received? Then we shall avail ourselves of the blessings we have and thus be fitted to receive more. Gratitude is much more than a verbal expression of thanks. Action expresses more gratitude than speech. If we are ungrateful for life, truth, and love, and yet return thanks to God for all blessings, we are insincere and incur the sharp censure our master pronounces on hypocrites. In such a case, the only acceptable prayer is to put the finger on the lips and remember our blessings. While the heart is far from divine truth and love, we cannot conceal the ingratitude of barren lives. What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth in grace, expressed in patience, meekness, love and good deeds to keep the commandments of our master and follow his example is our proper debt to him and the only worthy evidence of our gratitude for all that he has done outward worship is not of itself sufficient to express loyal and heartfelt gratitude since he has said if ye love me keep my commandments the habitual struggle to be always good is unceasing prayer. Its motives are made manifest in the blessings they bring. Blessings which, even if not acknowledged in audible words, attest our worthiness to be partakers of love. The progress of truth confirms its claims, and our Master confirmed his words by his works. His healing power evoked denial, ingratitude, and betrayal, arising from sensuality. Of the ten lepers whom Jesus healed, but one returned to give God thanks, that is, to acknowledge the divine principle which had healed him. There is no power apart from God. Omnipotence has all power. And to acknowledge any other power is to dishonor God. It has long been a question of earnest import. How shall mankind worship the most adorable but most unadored? And where shall begin that praise that shall never end? Beneath, above, beyond, methinks I hear the soft, sweet sigh of angels answering, So live that your lives attest your sincerity and resound his praise. Who lives in good lives also in God, lives in all life through all space. His is an individual kingdom, his diadem a crown of crowns. His existence is deathless, forever unfolding its eternal principle. Wait patiently on illimitable love, the Lord and giver of life. Reflect this life, and with it cometh the full power of being. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house.
prophet and apostle have glorified God in secret prayer, and he has rewarded them openly. Prayer can neither change God nor bring his design into mortal modes, but it can and does change our modes and our false sense of life, love, and truth, uplifting us to him. Such prayer humiliates, purifies, and quickens activity in the direction that is unerring. True prayer is not asking God for love. It is learning to love and to include all mankind in one affection. Prayer is the utilization of the love wherewith he loves us. Prayer begets an awakened desire to be and do good. It makes new and scientific discoveries of God, of his goodness and power. It shows us more clearly than we saw before what we already have and are. And most of all, it shows us what God is. Advancing in this light, we reflect it. And this light reveals the pure mind pictures in silent prayer. Even as photography grasps the solar light to portray the face of pleasant thought. What is gratitude but a powerful camera obscura, a thing focusing light where love, memory, and all within the human heart is present to manifest light? Let the voice of truth and love be heard above the dire din of mortal nothingness, and the majestic march of Christian science go on ad finitum, praising God, doing the works of primitive Christianity, and enlightening the world. <laughs>